What's going on guys, CTA Prime back here again. Today I want to do a quick look at Manjaro Arm on the Odroid N2 and then I'm going to show you how to install it. So for the past couple days I've actually had this installed on my Odroid N2. This has actually been one of the best boards released in 2019 so far. Now besides the Raspberry Pi 4 but that definitely still needs some work in all areas. Odroid N2 development has come a long way since it was initially released earlier in 2019. Unfortunately the Android version that's available for the N2 is still running 32-bit. As soon as we get 64-bit support, I will be doing another video on that. But if you have an Odroid N2 and you've been looking for a good desktop environment to run on it, I definitely suggest Manjaro ARM. Manjaro ARM is actually based on Arch, and most other releases for single board computers are either based on Debian or Ubuntu, but this is based on Arch Linux. It works fantastic on the Odroid N2. There's also support for the Raspberry Pi 3. There is a preview for the Raspberry Pi 4, but it's very, very sluggish right now. This will work on the Rock Pi 4 and even x86 laptops and PCs. But today, we're just going to be taking a look at it running on the Odroid N2. And like I said, then we'll get into the install. It's fairly easy to get it set up and going. There's actually two versions of Manjaro that we can choose from for the Odroid N2. We have the KDE desktop version, which I'm using now. It's just a more feature-rich version. Or LXQT. LXQT is much lighter weight, and if you're using an SD card instead of eMMC storage, I recommend using LXQT. Down here, we have our little app bar. Applications, computer, history, leave. I mean, if you've ever used Windows, Android, or any other Linux operating system, you shouldn't have any trouble navigating or using Manjaro on your N2 or any other single board computer or PC that you choose. Now this did come pre-installed with Firefox. So you can go ahead and browse the web with this or you could install Chromium or a browser of your choice. It's really up to you. One of the main differences between Arch and Debian or Ubuntu is the way we're going to get apps through Terminal. Now we can still open up Terminal by pressing Control-Alt-T or you can open it up from the taskbar down here. But if you've been messing around with the Raspberry Pi for a while, chances are you've run Raspbian, and that's based on Debian. In order to get apps, let's say we wanted to install GIMP, the image editor software. You would type in sudo apt git gimp. It would pull it down, install it for us. But with Arch, it's going to be a little different. We'll use the pacman command. So sudo pacman sci gimp. have to put in my password here. So now we have GIMP installed. If I go down here to my applications, graphics, we can launch it right here. Arch Linux and especially Manjaro are very well documented. So if you run into any issues, you can always search online and find the answer. And Manjaro itself has a really awesome forum where people are definitely willing to help. And I'll leave links to everything in the description. The web browser that's built in, like I said, is Firefox and it functions really well. I mean, we can go to YouTube and do a nice 720p video. Even 1080p video with Chromium or Firefox is still a little iffy, but I noticed that 720p on the N2 running Manjaro works great. So if you're interested in getting this up and running on your Odroid N2 or any of your other single board computers, let's go ahead and get started. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using a Windows 10 PC. A lot of people have access to a Windows 10 laptop or desktop, and we can flash an SD card from there very easily. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Now, I'm going to be installing this on an SD card, but if you're using a single board computer that supports an eMMC module, like the Rock Pro 64, the Odroid N2, or the Rock Pi 4, I highly recommend using an eMMC module. This is not a self-install image. You will just have to flash it directly to the eMMC, and you can boot it on the board. But I do completely understand that some of these eMMC modules are a little overpriced, so we're just going to be going with an SD card. But using eMMC storage is going to be much faster than an SD card. So first things first, we need to download the image we're going to be using. I'll leave a link for this in the description. I'm using the Odroid N2. I want to go with the LXQT version, but you can choose whatever you want depending on the board you have. While that's downloading, let's go ahead and download the application we're going to use to flash this image to our SD card or eMMC. And that's going to be Etcher. Works for Mac, Windows, or Linux. I'm just going to download the Windows version. 
As soon as both of these downloads are done, I'm just going to place them on my desktop for easy access. Everything's finished up on my end. I have the image here, the Odroid N2 Alex QT image. We do not have to extract this because Etcher is going to take care of everything. We're going to go ahead and start Etcher. From here, we're going to select the image we downloaded. Mine's right on my desktop here, Manjaro Arm. Double click. From the SD card section, just make sure you have the correct SD card or eMMC module chosen. Mine's a little 16 gigabyte SAND disk and I'm using a USB reader. And finally, flash. Etcher's going to go ahead and flash this to the SD card, then it's going to verify the file system. This could take a little while depending on how fast your SD card is, so just let it finish up. When Etcher is finished, you may get a couple warnings like this. We'll just go ahead and close them down. The SD card is now ready. We're going to go ahead and insert it into our single board computer. If you're on the Odroid N2, make sure you have the boot switch set to MMC. I'm also going to plug in my keyboard, mouse, Wi-Fi, HDMI, and finally, power up the board. There's a little more setup we need to do, but we're almost ready. If you're using an SD card, the first boot may take a little longer than normal, but you'll be presented with the Manjaro ARM installer. This is the setup screen. We need to enter our username. Now, I ran into trouble if I use all caps, so I went with lowercase. For some reason, I just couldn't log in if I had all capital letters here. Full name. And this is going to be our user password. We're going to confirm the password. Set up a root password. We need to choose our time zone, our locale, and finally, our keyboard layout. Now, this is kind of important because keyboards around the world use different setups. I want the standard US keyboard. Now we need to name the host. I'm just going to call it N2. Make sure everything's correct and press enter for yes. And you're now running Manjaro on your single board computer. So the username we put in, I used ETA prime and my password is password. If you ever need to log in as root, the username is root and then you're going to use the root password you set up. All that's really left to do is set up our Wi-Fi right down here in the lower right hand corner. If you're using Ethernet, it should automatically connect. So like I showed you at the beginning, we have our application bar down here. Education, graphics, internet, we'll open up Firefox. I'm just going to head over to YouTube real quick and do a 720p playback test. I'll also test 1080p so you can see the drop frames here, but with 720 we shouldn't have many drop frames at all. So at 720p, I have zero drop frames so far, but if I swap out to 1080p, we'll get a bunch of them. So whenever I install a fresh operating system, I like to do an update. You could always do this through terminal, or you can open up the software updater. This will pull everything we need to update down, and we can install it from here. So there's a list of all of my updates. Everything's checked that's out of date. I'll just click apply. We'll have to put in our user password. Mine was password. When we're installing these updates, it may also prompt us to install some dependencies that are missing. It'll give us a list. You can just click close. It'll pull the dependencies down and we can install them from here by clicking apply. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really hope you at least try out Manjaro Arm. If you run into any issues, you can always check out their forum. Links for everything that I mentioned in this video will be in the description. If you have any questions at all, or you want to see anything else running on the Odroid N2, just let me know in the comments below. It'd also be really cool if you could hit that like button, maybe subscribe to the channel. But like always, thanks for watching.